first new feature I'm going to show you from Autodesk Vehicle Tracking 2018 are the changes to creating uh, corridors from our roundabouts. You'll notice we have a new option in the settings now to create a corridor top surface for you when you create the roundabout. So let's go ahead and choose a standard from our standard explorer for the roundabout and we'll put in our round door and then we'll just select the arms that we want to use for the roundabout itself and in a moment we'll see how uh, also Civil 3D is better managing those alignments for you. It's created the roundabout now and now it's creating the geometry for you. These messages that are popping up are just telling you it's renaming some of the alignments. Now it's building the corridor and you'll see as soon as the corridor is built it also puts a surface on the top of the corridor for you automatically. So have a look at that in the object viewer you can see we have a full surface on the corridor. It's not perfect at this stage because obviously we still need to modify the profile design, um, but it does save you a lot of time in that additional step of you having to manually create a surface on your corridor. If we look in Prospector in Civil 3D, under the alignments you'll see there is a new folder for your roundabout and all the alignments for the roundabout are collected together just making it easier for you to manage what's being created in your drawing. The next feature I'm going to show in Vehicle Tracking 2018 is the slip lane for the roundabout. You'll see here on the ribbon we have an option to add the slip lane we can also go into the roundabout settings and add the slip lane here. The diagram of course is very useful to see what the various settings mean and how they're applied. So if I just skip through these, these are the slip lane entry settings that we can apply. The settings here control the various curve radii for the main part of the slip lane. And the last uh, dialog that we have is for the slip lane exit settings to control the exit uh, back out onto the arm of the road. So let's apply those and see how that's created on the roundabout. So it takes a few seconds just to rebuild the corridor and if we zoom out we can see the extent of the slip lane that it's applied. Um, obviously you may want to adjust the slip lane at this stage and you can do some adjustment actually on screen using the grips. You'll notice that as we slide these grips around there are some warning messages that come up um, so it warns you interactively whether you're meeting the, the required standards for the slip lane and should you have created a slip lane and then decide that you need to modify or remove it of course you can go back to the ribbon and there's an option on the ribbon to actually remove the slip lane that you've just created. Staying with the theme of roundabouts some of the other changes that have been made are to how we specify the parameters for the ICD of the roundabout. Notice in the dimensions tab in the roundabout properties there are many more settings available to you now. If I actually compare this with the diagram on the left which are the settings from vehicle tracking 2017 you can see that uh, there are many more settings that have been added and these are controlling the lane offsets, number of circulatory lanes, the lane widths and also uh, another new feature is being able to specify the outside curb offset in here as well. All of these will update the inscribed circle diameter for you in the dialog. If we apply that and just have a look at the roundabout so you can see it's generated um, the roundabout with those settings and if I just have a look at the grips over here you can see there's a grip on the ICD here that says adjust inscribed radius so we can use that grip and actually play around with the the radius of the the complete roundabout 
and it will adjust dynamically on the screen for you. So I'm going to take a look now at the splitter islands and the crossing uh, settings that we can apply. You'll notice when I add the splitter island here it, there is a, a message on the screen that says there's insufficient space so there's a warning for you that you haven't met the standards there. And if we actually go into the roundabout properties we can see that invalid value in there we can just correct that and we'll add now a pedestrian crossing to our splitter island. So we'll turn on the pedestrian crossing and you'll notice the different uh, refuge types that we have. Now I enter some basic settings in here. So what's new is the detail that we can add to this. You can see we have these various radii values that we can use to control how this refuge is created and detailed in our drawing. It means that we don't have to resort to drawing this manually in CAD, we can actually just apply it as part of the roundabout design properties. On screen, uh, after we've applied our crossing, we can use the grips to change the width and position of the crossing. And you'll notice that as we move this around, of course, all the interactive graphics just update for you. Next feature I'm going to show you will give you some idea how you can better manage the standards available to you in Autodesk Vehicle Tracking. So in the Roundabout Standard Explorer here, this is my pool of uh, recently used Roundabout Design Standards and I'm going to just pick one of these and save it as a file. I'll just give it a name and then what I'm going to do is change the file extension from ATJ and we're going to change this to meters and kilometers per hour and what this will do is actually save this file in a text format it's called a JSON file it stands for JavaScript object notation and why this is so useful is because I can actually see all the parameters of that standard in text format I can identify those parameters I want to amend and we can make changes to the file and save it I can then reopen that file in my Standards Explorer and that new amended version of the standards will now be available to use in the pool as you can see here. We can just view that file and you can see the changes that I made, in fact just the name in this case, have been applied to that standard. Finally, let's just have a look at some of the changes to the road markings in Autodesk Vehicle Tracking 2018. So if I select one of the arms, you'll notice we have turn arrows available to us. And in the settings, I can turn on the turn arrows. We can control the offset from the ICD or in front or behind the crosswalk. And we can also control the size. These little pull-down diagrams allow us to pick the type of turn arrow that you want to place. So we'll just apply that to the roundabout. And if I zoom into the drawing here, you can see the road marking that's been applied. And on screen, if I pick the road marking using the grips, I can change the position of the marking. And if I click the side of the box, you can also change the width or length of the marking and, of course, interactively it all updates on the screen for you.